Happy Friday! Welcome back to Drinking By My Shelf. My name is Emma and we are here for round three of Trash My TBR. And today I am drinking, I'm gonna show this to you because this is actually a cider that one of my very good uni friends made. He has his own cidery called Against the Grain and he sent me this laid back lumberjack cider. It's delicious, so I wanted to show it off to you guys and I will put the link to his website in the description box so you can go check it out. Very good friend and very delicious cider, so I just wanted to let you guys know about it. Oh, and it's suitable for vegans and celiacs, so that's all good stuff. Okay, what is Trash My TBR? I'm gonna give you a little recap because it has been like nine months since I did my last Trash My TBR and more than half of you are new since then. So you may not have ever seen one of my Trash My TBR videos before. Trash My TBR is basically a video idea I came up with like four years ago. It was very early days in my channel and the original Trash My TBR was actually literally just me reading out my TBR, my like Goodreads TBR books I didn't own yet and asking you guys to trash them. The whole idea was I had just calculated based on the average number of books I read in a year and the average life expectancy that I have, I had worked out how many books I'm likely to be able to read and the number was like scarily low compared to how many books are in the world and so I was like I don't want to waste my time on bad books, I need you to trash them so I can take them off my TBR and not waste my time with them. So that was the original one and since then I've done a few iterations of it, I did a trash my Christmas TBR a few years ago and then this most recent time I kind of relaunched it as like a game. How the game works is much the same really. I give you guys 10 books from my TBR and ask you to trash them. Negative comments only. I want you to like rip these books to shreds. I then, after I post that video, I then react to those comments, whittle down the books that you guys trash and anything that's left over that you guys haven't torn to shreds, I will then buy and read and see if I think you should have trashed those ones as well. So we're now on round three. We're actually gonna flash back to a clip that I filmed all the way back in January. <laughs> I really have been falling behind with this one, which is the scene of me reacting to your comments for the last 10 books that I asked you to trash. I can't remember off the top of my head what those 10 books are, but you will find out in the following scene. Oh hello, flashback to January. I've had my Trash My TBR video up for about a week now, a week and a bit. I've got loads and loads of comments from you guys, so thank you so much, that's so helpful. You have been brutal about these books, that's exactly what I wanted. So I'm gonna go through now and kind of sort out which of these books I'm going to trash based on your advice. So dear Mr. M, what have I heard about this? Robotnik says she's heard bad things about it. Kay says it had a really good beginning and then fell to a really flat ending. Marieke Vortman says that she finds a lot of Herman Cox books quite misogynist. That's a big thing for me, I don't like that. And I was a little wavering on it anyway, so I think to be honest, Dim is Dem, trashed. So next was The Mother. So this, from reading the comments as they came in, is the only one that nobody mentioned at all. No one said that they loved it, but no one said anything bad about it. I think maybe just people haven't heard of it, most people haven't read it. Let me just double check in case I miss anything. Yeah, no one said anything about it. And I thought it looked good. So I think my answer then is if no one's trashed it, I'll mustache it. <laughs> I make up new stupid rhymes every time. Next we have Allegedly, and this is one I've wanted to read for ages. Sophia's shelves says she was on the fence. She liked most of the book, but the ending didn't work for her. Okay. Ribbons and Blots says she didn't like it, but thinks I would, so that's interesting. Another one, Ambitious Reader, said she really liked it, but the ending is disappointing. But she still gave it four stars and would recommend it, so okay, fair enough. Katrina Thomas says, if I don't like teenage protagonists, which I don't really, then I should trash, allegedly. She was such an annoying teenager, there's an overabundance of bad language for no reason, I don't mind bad language, and teen stroppiness. This comment I saw coming in, so the audiobook aficionado says she really didn't like allegedly because it was excessively full of gross out descriptions. I'm like really, really squeamish. So that is actually quite a big one for me. I'm gonna Google, allegedly, Emetophobia. There isn't really much online about it. Oh, okay. I'm gonna be brave. I'm gonna be brave. It's not gonna be that bad, Emma. And the book sounds really good. Add to basket. Okay, next is The Price of Salt. Leviosa Lily said that it was just good slash okay for her, so she'll give it a smush, a half-hearted smash. That's very funny. Uh, quite a few people said it was just okay. Your True Shelf didn't love it, so it's pretty depressing. The main character gets treated badly, doesn't stand up for herself. Is it like blasphemy if I say I kind of want to trash it and just watch the film instead? 
because I do really want to watch the film. And uh, with people saying that it's just like a three star book, I'm gonna trash it. Next was So You've Been Publicly Shamed. This is the John Ronson book that is about like cancel culture and stuff. So Caitlin McCann left a really interesting comment, for example, she said she really enjoyed it, but the book is a bit of a time capsule. If you're looking for an of the moment take on cancel culture, this isn't quite it. It's the build up to cancel culture. So maybe it's just a book that like, I should have read it when I first wanted to read it years ago and now there's been so much conversation around it that I no longer need to read it. Olivia Engel said it was fantastic but again it kind of links to what Caitlin said. So she says it was fantastic and interesting because it came out before Call Out Culture was even named or as big as it is now. Which again that is really interesting but it does kind of link into what I was thinking of it's maybe it's of its time, maybe it wouldn't help contribute to the conversation that's happening now and that I see a lot of. So you've been publicly shamed? Trash it! Okay, next was The Conjoined. So this is one that has really low ratings on Goodreads. But I kept it on there for ages anyway because I really wanted to read it. It sounded really interesting, but I got some bad comments from you guys trashing it. Books and Things says, don't read The Conjoined. Everything about that book was awful. I never in my life read about such unlikable characters and not in the good way, but in the way it's unbelievable. Stupid writing and the ending never even tells you what happened. Please trust me on this one. I'm going to trust you. Oh, I've kept that one on my TV for so long because it sounds so interesting, but uh, that's because I liked the idea of that mystery and finding it out, and if you never find out what happened, then maybe it's not the book that I want it to be. Okay, the next one is a big one. The next one is Why We Broke Up by Daniel Handler, and you guys, really well done. You trashed this book. And yet. <laughs> I still really want to read it. This one got the most comments of anything. Reading with Kelsey says it's trash and doesn't even deserve an explanation. Ravens and Blot says it was whiny and annoying. Laura Swenson said it had manic pixie dream girl vibes. Megan Ellis said it was frustrating and annoying, didn't interest her at all, but the ending made her really emotional. Interesting. Nicole Martin said it was intensely boring. Hayley Ratlin said it was insufferable, had insufferable characters and thinks it's really clever. Bruno Bento, it's a beautiful edition but such a bad book. We're in the mind of a teenage girl written accordingly to a 40 year old white straight man. Everybody hates this book, everybody hates this book. But I'm still gonna read it. <laughs> if I hate it, I'm so sorry and I will never not listen to you guys again because you did such a good job of doing exactly what I asked you to do. And I can't believe I'm ignoring you. It's just that I really want to read this book. Okay, Orbiting Jupiter, what did people say here? Okay, Nicole Glasson said that the second half of the book ticked over to what she would consider tragedy porn. But she then said she still thinks it's worth a read and she gave it four stars, but over time it left a bad taste in her mouth. Okay, interesting. I don't like the idea of it being like tragedy porn though. That is off-putting. Add to basket. You guys didn't trash it, I'm adding it to my basket. <laughs> and then finally, the last one was I Found You by Lisa Jewell. And this one, okay, Jess Tanaka says it was a book she enjoyed until the end. It has a reasoning for the bad guy that's extremely problematic. Kathy, another great etc, made a really good point, which was to trash it, because I already own a book by Lisa Jewell that I haven't read yet, so it'd be stupid to keep another one on my TBR if I don't yet know I like her writing, so she suggests that basically I should trash it now. If I then read this other Lisa Jewell and love it, I can always go back and add her other books to my TBR, but right now, why would I get it when I haven't even tried the first one? And Jade Poppy said the ending was obvious, there are better thrillers out there, trash. When it comes to thrillers, I'm really, really picky because I've read so many, so the fact that people are trashing it at all, especially when it's down to stuff like having a bad ending or being a bit predictable, I don't need that in my life. I found you in the trash. So thanks very much, guys, for all those comments. We've narrowed down that list of 10 books down to four. Did I just put four in my basket? The Mother, Allegedly, why we broke up and orbiting Jupiter. Okay, I'm gonna buy those ones now and I will check back in when I've read them. Okay, so we're back. Here I am, back again, nine months older. My eyelashes significantly shorter because I was wearing ridiculous false eyelashes in that last one that I never wore again, though I did kind of love them, so I might start doing that again. But anyway, let's go through my reactions to the books that I did end up buying. So as you've just seen, I bought four books at the end of Trash My TBR, the books that you guys did not trash enough. The one book that you guys did trash and that I deliberately ignored you, I bought Why We Broke Up. And spoiler alert, turns out I have very differing opinions because this is the only one I still 
Oh, it's the only one I liked enough to keep, but we will get to that. So, The Mother by Yvette Edwards. This one was a bit of a weird one because actually nobody commented on it. So another change I'm gonna make for next round is I'm not gonna just give you the next 10 books, I'm just gonna tell you the next 10 books that are well known because the game doesn't really work if no one comments on a book because it's not very well known, you guys haven't read it. I need to actually give you a chance, books that you are likely to have read and likely to have opinions on. So nobody trashed this one, so I ended up buying it, and unfortunately I did DNF it. I didn't read very much of it, so I didn't give it a huge chance, I just wasn't getting into it, so I'm a big DNFer, I moved on with my life. I'm sure it, for some people, will be an absolutely brilliant book. The story sounds very, very emotional. It's about a woman who is attending the trial of her son's murderer. Um, so obviously this tragic situation, but the writing style just wasn't clicking with me, which is why I DNF'd it. It was very much telling you like exactly our main character's thought process as she went through them. And that's a bit of a pet peeve that I have in books in general. I like to be able to do some of the work. I don't like it when they literally tell you every single thought they have and every up and down, every back and forth, I just, I find it too exhausting because like my brain's busy, I can't be inside this person's busy brain as well. So I don't know if you guys would have felt the same or not because that was the only one that I didn't get any comments on um, because it's just not a super, super well-known book. So maybe some of you might have felt the same, maybe some of you would have loved it, but let's move on to the next one that you guys did have thoughts on. So the next book that I bought was Allegedly by Tiffany D. Jackson. And this one, honestly, I did think it was great and I would recommend it. I just didn't love it enough to keep it. I really enjoyed it storyline wise and there were loads of really important issues being tackled in it, which I really liked reading about but my problem with it was the structure. So it did do another of my pet peeves in books, just again, just on a personal level, I don't like this, is when you get constant foreboding that something is going to happen. So when the main character is withholding a secret from you, but lets you know. When the main character is constantly hinting to the reader that the reader doesn't know everything and that there's gonna be this reveal, I just find it really irritating. And it also means that whenever the reveal does come, it's not, interesting or surprising because you're just waiting, you've been waiting for so long for this reveal that whatever happens is going to be disappointing. And interestingly, as you just saw in the January section, that was what most of the negative comments were saying. A lot of people said that they loved the book but that the ending didn't work for them. But overall, a lot of people seem to agree with me, even when they were criticising that format and the ending, a lot of people said they still thought it was really worth a read and I would agree with that. Other criticisms that you guys left in the comments were that there were gross things, gross elements to the book that I wouldn't like, which is true, I definitely didn't enjoy those, and that I wouldn't enjoy the teenage protagonist because often I don't enjoy being inside teenage protagonist's head. But actually again I didn't mind that because I cared so much about this particular teenager's predicament that I did feel invested in her. So overall, I'm glad that I didn't trash it. It was worth a read, but it wasn't a book that I fell in love with. And I have quite similar thoughts about the next book as well, which was Orbiting Jupiter. So this one, I, I really liked actually, especially the first half. I really did like it quite a lot, but I overall didn't end up loving the book and did end up giving it away because of pretty much what Nicole said, as you just saw in the January section, that the second half kind of tipped over into tragedy porn and I really don't enjoy when I can feel the emotional manipulation. I felt like it was, a, it was already such an interesting and moving and sad story and I cared about it a lot at the beginning so I didn't need the author to try that hard to make me feel things because I was already feeling them. But again, Nicole said in her criticism that she still felt it was worth a read and I 100% agree. It's really, really interesting issues being tackled here. I don't think I actually described what either of those books were about, so let me give you a very quick synopsis in a second. Um, but yeah, Orbiting Jupiter, very interesting storyline, but it just didn't need to try that hard. So I completely agree with your guys' comments, basically. So let's just quickly give you the synopses of both of those. In short, allegedly is about a teenage girl who um, was accused of killing a baby that she and her mother were in charge of. Her mother was the babysitter for this baby. Um, so she has been in a, she's living in a juvenile detention center, but then she gets pregnant herself. And so she suddenly, um, the stakes are higher, she doesn't want her child to be born while she's in this detention centre and be taken away, so she suddenly is determined to set out and prove her innocence. Orbiting Jupiter is about a young boy whose parents foster a slightly older, but I think they're kind of 10 and 12, possibly 12 and 14 actually, um, these boys. So they foster this older boy who was also 
sent to a detention centre for um, attacking a teacher. And it turns out that he has a child out there and he becomes really determined to find his baby. So it becomes very sad as he sets out to do that. Okay, and finally, Why We Broke Up, the only book I liked enough to keep and the one that you guys trashed the most. As you just saw in the January section, you guys went very, very hard on trashing this book. And what's funny is that you weren't wrong. I agree with basically everything you said, and yet I still loved this book. So I wrote down some of the comments I agreed with. Let's just recap. Whiny and annoying, accurate. Manic pixie dream girl, accurate. Frustrating, accurate. Insufferable characters, accurate, but I loved it. The book is basically about a breakup. So it's a collection of items and you get these little drawings throughout, which is really nice as well. It's a shoebox basically that the girl has put together and filled with items from their relationship and she's posted it back to the boy along with this letter describing the downfall, the breakup of their relationship. And I have a real thing about books that are about relationships ending kind of before they get started. I don't know why. It gets me even more than books about like breakdowns of long-term relationships, which surely is actually a lot sadder and more heartbreak involved. But for some reason for me, what really gets me is relationships that are just building and then things start to fall apart and start to slip away and the character can't quite work out why, those always get me so much. So I just read um, Pages For You by Sylvia Brownrigg in which that happens. I read, there's a short story and I can't remember the name of the short story, but in the book Hot Little Hands by Abigail Ullman is a collection of short stories and three of them are linked. And together the three of them tell the story of this relationship kind of starting and then just slipping away. And for some reason it really like hits me hard every single time that kind of story really affects me. And so that might be partly why I felt so affected by this. But in short, you guys were right. Every single negative thing you said about this book was true, but I am the worst and I loved it. So moving on to the next round. I am now going to tell you 10 popular books from my Goodreads TBR and I want you guys to trash them. To be clear, these are all books I am very excited about reading, so I don't need to hear your positive reasons for why I should read them. I'm already very excited to read these books. Like if there's a book that you really, really think I should read, then like send me a message on Instagram or Twitter or something telling me. But in this comment section, we want negative energy only, bad vibes only. Basically all of these books I took from my TBR priorities section. So they're books I am very, very, very psyched for and I'm gonna really need your help <laughs> in trashing them if I'm gonna not waste my life reading every book that's ever existed. I need some of these to at least come off my TBR. So are you ready? Are your angry fingers ready on the keyboard? Will you please trash my TBR? Almost Love by Louise O'Neill. I loved her first two books, Asking For It and Only Ever Yours. This is her first adult book, but it's a few years old now, I'm just really behind. So I love her writing, Will I Like This Book? A Town Like Alice by Neville Shute. This is not a big book on booktube, but it is a very well-known book in general. Um, my family have all read it and loved it. Everyone I know who's read it has loved it, but I don't actually know what it's about or anything really. I've read one Neville Shute book before, which was called On The Beach and I really enjoyed it. So if you have read this classic, Tell me that you hate it. <laughs> the Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro. This again is a very famous classic book. I've only read one Kazuo Ishiguro, which was Never Let Me Go, but I loved it. So I've been wanting to read this one for absolutely years. So tell me it sucks. The Warlow Experiment by Alex Nathan. I have seen this quite a few places on booktube. So this is a thriller about a experiment, something to do with prison? I can't remember, but I don't want to look it up right now because I'll get all excited about it again. So just tell me the bad bits. Burn Our Bodies Down by Rory Power. So I loved Wilder Girls. I did see that Books and Lala was disappointed when she read Burn Our Bodies Down. Dig by A.S. King. This is one that Books and Lala loves. I don't, I think it's YA, right? I don't usually read YA because of the aforementioned, I don't always love being in young people's heads in books. So do you think that'll be an issue for me? All the Missing Girls by Megan Miranda. This is one I've had on my Goodreads TBR for so long. I think it was like a Reese Witherspoon book club pick years ago and I put it on because I was in my like reading all of the popular psychological thrillers phase, which I have now slightly grown through. I mean, I do read thrillers a lot. It's still like my favorite of the genres, but I'm much pickier about them now and I don't just love like 
every cliche sounding thriller. So this one is probably a cliche thriller, right? Tell me it's a cliche thriller. Six Stories by Matt Wesolowski. This is one that is, it sounds very cool. It's, I think it's a podcast or it's a radio show. Like it's a book, but that the book is about a podcast or a radio show, which sounds really cool, but maybe it's one of those where it's like a cool premise, shit execution, let me know. My Grandmother Asked Me To Tell You She's Sorry by Frederick Backman. I loved Bear Town. Really enjoyed A Man Called Uwe, although I didn't love it as much. Like, it is a bit, it's a little bit cloying, maybe, but I did really, I think I gave it five stars, but it was like a reluctant five stars. So maybe if I don't feel like anything too sugary sweet, is that too sugary sweet? And then finally, number 10, Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. I mean, this one, to be honest, you have a hard task because I really want to read this one. I've wanted to read it for years. It was really, really big a few years ago and I never got around to it. And now I don't see people talking about it that much anymore, but I don't think I've ever seen a negative review. So please do give me your negative reviews if you have them, but I have to warn you, I'm probably not gonna listen. I'm probably gonna buy this book. So thanks for watching round three of Trash My TBR, and hopefully it will not be very long at all until I see you for Trash My TBR round four. Fingers crossed, famous last words. It's probably gonna be like 2023. We might be in the next big pandemic by then, but oh god, touch wood, touch wood. No, we won't be. Everything's going to be fine. I will see you soon for round four and happy Friday. Goodbye.